It's Thursday, July 1st, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Barbados remains on Tropical Storm Warning as Tropical Storm Elsa turned to life early this morning in the Atlantic. At 5 a.m., the center of Tropical Storm Elsa was located near latitude 9.4 north, longitude 48.8 west, or about 865 miles east-southeast of the Windward Islands. Elsa is moving towards the west near 25 miles per hour. According to forecasters, an even faster motion to the west-northwest is expected over the next 24 to 36 hours. On the forecast track, the system will pass near or over portions of the Windward Islands or the Southern Leeward Islands on Friday. Maximum sustained winds have increased to near 40 miles per hour with higher gusts. Some additional strengthening is forecast during the next couple of days. Tropical storm Elsa is expected to produce rainfall totals of 3 to 6 inches with maximum totals of 8 inches, which may lead to isolated flash flooding and mudslides. Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissia Etienne, says preparations for this year's hurricane season are especially vital in the face of worsening COVID-19 outbreaks in the Caribbean and Central America. She made the comment during her latest press conference on the pandemic. Dr. Etienne urged countries to use effective alert systems and consider outfitting hospitals and expanding shelters to reduce the potential of transmission. And this year's hurricane season arrives during worsening outbreaks in the Caribbean and Central America, making storm preparations especially vital. Over the last five years, the Americas have witnessed over 550 extreme weather events impacting more than 190 million people. And the potential for devastation is even higher in the context of a pandemic. Mitigating risk starts with having effective alert systems. So people know when it's safe to stay home and when it's better to evacuate. Countries should also consider outfitting hospitals and expanding shelters to reduce the potential for transmission, including among family members, since social distancing and proper ventilation will become difficult in the context of a storm. A group of 16 retired workers is demanding to know why a statutory corporation and an insurance company are defying numerous court orders to hand over pension payments owed to them. In January 2020, the High Court declared that the former employees of the Barbados Agricultural Development and Marketing Company were entitled to the proceeds of a statutory pension plan offered to them through Surgical Life Inc. The outstanding payments, totaling just over $2 million, are owed to approximately 30 former workers, some of whom have passed away. Here is what some had to say. Most of us here are over the age of 65. And most of us would have given, this is the, uh, a concerning factor, we have given the prime of our youth to this uh, entity this company and it you know the way we are treated we shouldn't even be in a position where we have to go to court to receive pension a plan that was paid for us but here is it now that we've gone to court there have been a judgment since last year 2020 and all have been ignored by all and sundry um, who should have administered these funds. And there are funds there. And there were people who were getting from the fund. They received money from the fund. Some have passed away. Even within this group, we have had uh, a couple of persons who have passed away without uh, having any benefits of the fund. And I was supposed to be pensionable the 1st of January 2014. That has not materialized as yet. I don't know when. But I want to make a personal 
um, appeal. I am in my 73rd year, and I would say I'm a... I'm not bed up. So I would like to get my money to enjoy before I pass the other side. Because sitting here, I've noticed that three of us or four of us, since we were pursuing this case of pass, and a lot of us are on one leg. The COVID-19 pandemic has slowed down at the Technical and Vocational Education and Training Council's certification rate. However, the Council's Executive Chair, Henderson Eastmond, revealed that students are slowly returning to institutions for much-needed hands-on learning. He said students were unable to attend face-to-face -face classes for practical components of their respective programs due to the lockdown and COVID-19 restrictions. Yes, it has affected us in our normal program in the CVQs because, you know, technical education has a heavy hands-on component. And for most of the institutions, they could not put that on. And, and, and that was so across the world. I think they're rethinking the delivery of TVET to bring in more. They're looking at it now across the world because most of the institutions were closed. They couldn't, they couldn't, they could do only teach the cognitive part online. But when you get to the practical part now, and I know that students who went to Polytechnic were talking to one of the staff members this evening, that same about her son. He was at SJPI. And they, are, they have now gone back in to do the practical part. So everything was on pause for some time. And our certification rate has slowed down because we are waiting then for those cohorts to complete their practical part. So COVID has affected everybody. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. We continue now with developments in the region. The Belize government implements new COVID-19 measures which go into effect on Sunday, July 4th due to an increase in COVID-19 cases. The country's Home Affairs Minister, Karim Musa, outlined some of the measures. The curfew uh, will continue in place. So there will be an extension of the curfew from Sunday through to Wednesday night. It will remain at 10 p.m., but there will be an adjustment in the curfew from Thursday to Saturday night. The new curfew will be 11 p.m. So it is just a reduction of one hour, but a very important reduction because we have seen where uh, at these various establishments, restaurants, like the minister said under the guise, um, they're actually operating like bars. That is where, that is a critical hour where things get out of control and people start to party, uh, which again is not allowed under these regulations. In terms of church services, um, as you know, last month we had agreed to extend uh, church service uh, to two hours we are now cutting back to the one-hour church service. Um, and again, that is with a 50% capacity inside the church. Um, we are also encouraging, and I believe we'll be putting it in the protocols, uh, to cordon off every other pew to ensure that we get the 50% capacity. And finally, on the international front, the death toll rises in the U.S. as life-threatening heat continues to bear down on the country as well as Canada. More from CBS News. Life-threatening heat continues to bear down on both coasts and the death toll is rising. Officials in Oregon have reported 45 deaths related to excess heat in one county alone. At the White House today, President Biden warned of the dangerous conditions in the West. People are hurting. 
It's more dangerous for kids to play outside. Roads are buckling under the heat. Along the East Coast, temperatures continue to climb into the high 90s, with feels like temperatures hitting 106 in Philadelphia and 103 in New York. The people who have pre-existing medical problems like hypertension and diabetes, high cholesterol, even mental health disorders are at risk. In New York City, air conditioning crews are working around the clock. <laughs> and in Philadelphia, buses were dispatched throughout the city as cooling centers for the city's most vulnerable. I can expect probably a little bit more today than the pattern. The high temperatures in the Pacific Northwest are beginning to move inland. Throughout the heat wave, Washington State reported more than 1,300 emergency room visits for heat-related illnesses. In Canada, the Vancouver Police Department reported nearly 100 sudden deaths since Friday, the vast majority likely related to the heat. The town of Lytton, British Columbia, hit a record 121 degrees. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.bobbylistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.